Hey friends, it's Kip Icon, and welcome back to Kip Plays Kentucky Route Zero. We're playing Act 1, Scene 3. Conway brushes some dirt off Homer's hat. How's it going, Homer? Huh. Not sure that uh, lady was right about the on-ramp to the Zero being here. I guess you can't tell with some folks. They're liable to run you around just for kicks. Should we look around or get back on the road? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess we should look around, eh? Looks like no on-ramp I've ever seen. Oh, this is a new character here. Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Oh, it's Shannon Marquez. It's $200 for two weeks. Phone inaudible. I guess he can't kick me out for another week or two. Phone inaudible. Yes, and I appreciate that, but... Phone inaudible. Forget it. Bye. Shannon hangs up the phone and puts it away. What does that say? No work tomorrow. No work tomorrow, right? Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on and I'm looking for the on-ramp to... Do you believe in ghosts? Well, let's see. I do believe a place can be haunted if that's what you mean. What about a person? Can a person be haunted? Sure, I guess a person could. Sometimes I feel haunted myself. What haunts you? Uh, bad decisions, I guess. Wasted youth. Ha. Well, look. Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lizette's Antiques, and I'm out, tr and I'm out trying to finish this job. You're making a delivery to the mine? Oh, uh, no. Oh, this is the mine. That, uh, yeah, because we heard that Shannon Marquez would be at the mine. Oh, uh, no. I have a delivery for Five Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now, I heard I need to take a highway called The Zero. So I met this young lady, name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way. So here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway with... What? Weaver Marquez. Do you know her? So you saw her. Tonight. I know Weaver. She was... She's my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Alright, so here we go. So you saw her tonight. I know Weaver. She was... I mean, she's my cousin. So, yeah. So, Weaver is dead. Weaver is totally a ghost. And Shannon saw her tonight... Or got a message from her tonight. So it's almost like Weaver has arranged the meeting of the two of us or something. I'm not sure exactly, but that's... A little speculation. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was very upset, crying. And then my dad walked into the door, or walked in the door. Just come back from a trip to the junkyard, collecting scrap metal to fashion into wind chimes. Wow. So wait. Weaver doesn't lie. She said that the dad was in a car wreck. But then he walked in the door. So wait, that's a lie. Right? I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke. And it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it was a riddle or a pu or she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. So what does that mean? Did the dad... Hmm. So what are you doing down here, Shannon? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or, anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Have you been paying attention? 
<laughs> Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Elkhorn mine. She said I'd find something I've been looking for. Is that us? Are we something you've been looking for? What are you looking for? I'm not exactly sure. I have a few ideas. I'll know it when I see it. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now. All told, I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else, we gotta keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. I've got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out, out ahead, do some analysis, and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Topology. Okay. Topology, that's the science of continuous space, my friend. This way, or the way this twisty maze of passages fits together. I know what the word meant. Aw, bye, Homer. It's no place for dogs, is what she said. If it were up to me, we'd do everything with Homer, but we gotta give Homer a break. Ooh, I love this 3D effect here. Yeah, what's this PA thing? That runs into the mind's PA system. Do you think it still works? Only one way to find out. All right, give it a whirl. Mm, let's see here. Conway into PA. Uh, how big is this place? Nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay, even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens, coal scrip, you know. And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. My parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Can we power it up? Oops, I sped through that. I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything is rationed. Here, set up that lamp of yours, and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. Conway clears his throat nervously. Oh. Um. Conway tries to think of something clever to say. I heard the speakers back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try saying something into the, mouth, into the mouthpiece. Well. Okay. I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. Hmm. Ooh, I love this one. Conway rubs a finger along the surface of the mouthpiece. Conway hums a deep tone into the mouthpiece. Conway spits. Damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with a cave system. Alright, I set up my spectrum analyzer, so just say something into the mouthpiece and we can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy. Just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story about something, or, or what did you have for breakfast today? Mm. How about this? We had a little flashback earlier at the bait shop about uh, roof repair, right? Being a roofer? Here's a story. I used to work doing roof repair. We even fixed up a, fixed up a church roof once. It seemed like a big project, but doable. But I was too hungover, and we ran late. Wow, that's not how a PA system should work. <laughs> Got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. I hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Uh, you're probably used to it. One more test. We just need to know if the air is breathable, or if it's too thin, or too dense. Just sit real close to the mouthpiece and breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. This isn't a thing. 
Conway breathes and thinks about the road. I don't know. I think he's gonna breathe and thinks about and think about resting. Conway breathes. Oh. Conway breathes and remembers a moment when he was younger. Getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Ooh. There's a lot of talk of, of drinking and addiction here. Conway breathes and visualizes a cold drink. Conway breathes and relaxes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. What? Ugh. That's gotta be pretty terrible to have a cave-in and a mine on you when you're thinking about relaxing. Whoa! And in the next episode, we're gonna find out what happens. So thanks a lot for watching. I have been and I will continue to be Kip Icon as long as you guys continue to what? Follow your drams. Bye!